Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss the Department of Labor ethical standards when it comes to the CPA exam. The first thing we want to understand is something called employee benefit plan. What is an employee benefit plan? It's a plan established by either the company or the union or both to maintain a pension plan for their employees, which we call participant. Simply put, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and even in the 80s, most companies had a pension plan. What is a pension plan? You work for a company for 15, 20, 30 years. Once you retire, the company will pay you a certain amount of money. Now, it's important to understand those pension plan in a historical context and why do we have this ERISA or the Department of Labor Ethical Standard. Back in the 50s and 60s, pension plan were infiltrated by the mafia, by the mob. And if you watch mob movies, like one of them is The Goodfellows, it's, it's not the best one for this topic, but they do touch upon this. It's basically the mob was was infiltrating the those plans through the union and misusing the money or even outright st stealing the money, using it for some other purpose. So what the government wanted to do is protect the participant. And to protect the participant, you wanted to make sure the benefit, the benefit, it means the funds that the company is putting away in that plan is protected through either some sort of an insurance policy or self-funded arrangement, but the money is there and the money is protected. So the government introduced this Employee Retirement Income Security Act, or ERISA, in 1974. And who enforces ERISA? The Department of Labor. So basically, the government says, going forward, we are going to make sure those benefit plan report on an annual basis their figure to us, audited figures, to make sure that the what they promised their employee will be there. So the, their, participants, their participants are protected. Now, when we do the audit, when the auditor do the audit, the audit has to follow the government auditing standard. But the most important thing is the auditor must be independent. So when the auditor conduct that audit of the employee benefit plan that gets submitted to the government, that we're making sure everything is good, the auditor themselves must be independent. Simply put, you don't want the auditor to be part of the good fellows, part of the mob. That's, that's the idea. Now, it doesn't have to, but that's the idea is the auditor must be independent to protect the public. Now, what is independence as when it comes to the auditor? Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. First, we're gonna discuss what impairs independence, and this is for CPA purpose exam. Well, if during the engagement, at the end of the date of the opinion, or during the period covered by the financial statement, the auditor, the firm, or a member thereof, we're gonna see what a member is, has any financial interests, direct financial interests, or any material indirect financial interests in the plan. So simply put, you cannot have any direct financial interests and any material indirect financial interests. So you could have immaterial indirect financial interests, that's fine. Now, what is a member? The member is pretty comprehensive. All partners or shareholder employee of the firm, and the whole firm, and all professional employee participating in the audit. Also, those are covered member or located in an office of the firm participating in a significant portrait of, portion of the audit. So notice member covered a lot. Also, the auditor cannot be the plan sponsor or promoter. You cannot play those roles, underwriter of the plan, invest, and you cannot be an investment advisor to the plan, voting, voting trustee, director, officer, or employee. So what is the, again, what is the plan? The plan will have assets, will have uh, stocks, will have bonds, will have all sorts of investments. The auditor cannot be any of this when it comes to the plan. Also, the auditor cannot maintain the books of the plan. And that should be common sense to us. You cannot maintain the books and audit your own work. Basically, you're auditing your own work. Also, the auditor cannot be party in interest with the plan. What does that mean? It means you cannot buy and sell anything to the plan, any stuff to the plan, any investments, buy it from them, sell it from them, advise them, so on and so forth. Why? Because there's always the potential of conflict of interest and you have to be what? Independent from the plan itself. 
We also need to know when is independence is not impaired because that's what they test you on the exam. They'll give you a scenario and say, is independent impaired or not? Well, other professional services, as long as they're not prohibited, as we saw on the prior slide, for example, tax, that's fine. Also, they always talk about the actuary. That's fine. The plan can use as the, an actuary that is also associated with the accountant. What is an actuary? An actuary is a specialist. There's a field called actuarial science where those actuaries, it's really a tough exam, much harder than the CPA exam, much, much harder. And the actuary, they will estimate the liability, how much the company is responsible for in order to have that plan fully funded based on the number of employee, how long they're gonna live, so on and so forth. Now the plan, can use an actuary and that actuary can also be hired by the accountant for other purpose. That's fine, there is no conflict of interest here. Also, the firm hired a former officer or employee that is disassociated from the plan or the plan sponsor. That's fine, as long as you are disassociated and the employee don't work on the audit for the period for which he or, he or she was an employee of the plan or the plan sponsor. So it's okay to hire them as long as they dis disassociated themselves, left, left the plan, and you don't allow them to work on an audit for the same period for which they were also an employee of the plan or the plan sponsor. That does not impair independence. So the questions on the exam revolves around what is independence when it comes to the Department of Labor ethical standard and when the situation is not a violation of independence. Remember, the Department of Labor establishes, esta enforces ERISA. And what's the purpose of ERISA? Is to protect your grandpa, your grandma who has a pension plan. Why? Because you don't want that money to be embezzled. So that's the purpose of it. So you have the auditor auditing the plan and submitting the audit to the to ERISA to make sure everything is good. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures, look at MCQs specifically the previously released AICPA questions, they usually recycle them or they recycle the concepts. Easy points on the CPA exam. Take it seriously. Good luck. Study hard. I'm always here to help you and stay safe.